Hello, Pinheads. Welcome to This Week in Pinball's January 2021 recap of everything happening in the pinball world. American Pinball has announced a new senior game designer, Dennis Nordman. Dennis has used his creative style to design both licensed and non-licensed games for Bally, Williams, Stern, Multimorphic, and Highway Pinball. The guys at the Super Awesome Pinball Show interviewed Dennis Nordman and David Fix to talk about the direction of American Pinball. Dennis said that the goal is to have two games come out this year. They also talked about American Pinball's new facility and the challenges with COVID as well as American Pinball's Hot Wheels, Houdini, and Oktoberfest. Also, David Fix says some things that ruffled a few podcasters' feathers. Listen to the full episode of the Super Awesome Pinball Show. Jersey Jack Pinball's Guns N' Roses Collector's Editions are rolling off the line and are now arriving in people's homes. Check out these happy pinballers. The Loser Kid Pinball Podcast was joined by Jersey Jack Pinball's Eric Minier. Eric talked about his experience working with Guns N' Roses lead guitarist Slash and about how passionate Slash was on the project. Eric also said that just one of the machine's integrated musical light shows took programmer Joe Katz 80 man hours. For a three and a half minute song, it took two solid weeks of work. And the final game has over two hours of music, each song with its own custom lighting effects. To hear more, check out the full Loser Kid Pinball Podcast. The Slam Tilt Pinball Podcast was joined by Stern Pinball's Tim Sexton, Raymond Davidson, and Dean Grover to talk about Led Zeppelin Pinball. They went in depth about getting the Led Zeppelin license and about how Stairway to Heaven will not appear in the game. They also talked about the light show integration with the songs and the expression lighting, as well as the electric magic device and streaming the game live. Listen to all of the details on the podcast episode. Speaking of Led Zeppelin, Stern Pinball shared on their Facebook page that the limited editions are on the production line. See the brand new pinball machines being assembled by hand. They also announced the cost of adding the expression lighting to the pro models. Check out the awesome expression lighting. The Led Zeppelin cabinet expression lights and art blade kit is available for purchase and will be shipping out in March 2021. The Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas is asking fans for their help. The nonprofit museum is one of the most famous pinball locations in the world. It houses hundreds of pinball machines and arcade games from different eras including several rare games. They're moving to a new location at the south end of the Strip, just south of Mandalay Bay and north of the fabulous Las Vegas sign. Due to the pandemic, their income has been significantly impacted and they are asking for help from the pinball community. For the full story behind the Pinball Hall of Fame and the details about their exciting move to Las Vegas, visit their GoFundMe page and support this amazing museum. Now it's time for Last Week in Digital Pinball with Blockade Pinball Podcast's Chris Freebus. A cargo ship from China carrying the much-anticipated cabinets for Arcade 1-Up hit some very rough seas and lost or damaged almost 2,000 containers. It's not actually known what extent of 1-Up's shipment was actually lost, but new delivery dates in February have shown up on GameStop's website. That's not all. Chris also went into detail explaining digital pinball licensing and why not all things make it into the digital translations. When the table is themed off an existing license, permissions and fees need to be paid. Actors need to be compensated for their likeness and music licensing is notoriously expensive. When the company Farsight added the Adams Family to Pinball Arcade, they had to alter the image of Fester because they didn't pay for the rights to use Christopher Lloyd's likeness. You probably would never notice these things, but when looking at a still of the two, it becomes obvious. For more about licensing, censorship, and about how tables are packaged together, check out Last Week in Digital Pinball. The Super Awesome Pinball Show also interviewed Roger Sharp, 
the man who saved pinball. Roger talked about companies sitting on licenses. He said some companies have been known to acquire licenses just so the competitors can't get it. On the average shelf life for a license, Roger said the standard term is three to five years, and it tends to be based on the product, not the intellectual property. There is also some discussion on Harry Potter being gained by Joe Kamenkow at Stern. That would be big news if true. But what kind of harnessing will J.K. Rowling put on the use of any of the content? Roger also answered a lot of game show style questions from well-known pinball personalities and talked about the importance of the design team being passionate about the theme they are working on. For more, listen to the full podcast. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, our monthly giveaway winners. Congrats to all the previous month's winners. Make sure to go to patreon.com slash TWIP and become a member. By giving This Week in Pinball a small monthly donation, you will automatically be entered in our upcoming monthly giveaways and also get all the awesome TWIP perks. You can also email giveaways at thisweekinpinball.com with your name, address, and email to be entered for this month only. This Week in Pinball Swag Pack goes to Andrew. A Pinball Life Pin Gulp goes to Robert. A Pin Quest Hat goes to Lawrence. A Hooked on Pinball Gift Card goes to Brian. A Silver Ball Swag Gift Card goes to Steve. A Titan Universal Silicone Ring Kit goes to The Pins. The Comet Pinball Gift Card goes to Justin. The Pin Sound Gift Card goes to Berserker. And finally, the grand prize, Pin Stadium Neo. Drum roll, please. Sean, congratulations. And a huge thank you to our generous sponsors that help make this hobby great. Our Patreon members make TWIP possible. A special thanks to our newest subscribing Patreon supporters, Jared, James, Mark, Mark and Tracy, and Andrew. Between forums, podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, it's hard to keep up with everything happening in the world of pinball. This Week in Pinball is your one-stop shop for pinball news and happenings. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for our YouTube channel. Catch you on the flip side, pinballers.